fellow Wasteland survivors, I'm Dean, and in today's video, how to get the Ultra Side Power Armor from the Brotherhood of Steel, we're going to see how to start this quest from the main quest line. We're also going to take an in-depth look at all the steps that you'll need to complete so that you can get your very own set of this T60 Ultra Sight Power Armor. Now, there are a few ways to start this quest line, but we're going to pick it up from where we end at Abby's Bunker. So, if you've gotten this quest by other means, please feel free to skip ahead in the video to wherever it is you need to start it up from. Also, I need to warn everybody, this video is full of spoil alerts, so be aware. Alright, this is a very lengthy video, so let's get this thing started. Today's adventure will start at Abby's Bunker, which is located right here on the map. And as you can see, it's directly east of Vault 76. Now, if you've never been to Abby's Bunker before, once you enter for the first time, you will get an audio recording from a young lady named Abby. At that time, you will start the Early Warnings quest line. She wants you to repair and complete a Scorch Detection System. At the end of this quest line, she will mention the Brotherhood of Steel. And at that time, you will get the quest, Defiance has Fallen. She knows about them, but she doesn't know where they're located. So, we're going to need to find out where they're at. Right after that, you will complete her quest line, coming to fruition. Now, we're free to start the Brotherhood of Steel quest line, and all we need to do is find out where to get started. So, let's check it out on the map. As you're getting ready to leave Abby's Bunker, the quest should say, Find the location of Fort Defiance. So, we're going to need to find clues on where Fort Defiance is, and the quest will lead us to Camp Venture. Once we've reached Camp Venture, there will be several Scorch that you'll need to kill. Once you do, you'll have free reign of the compound. Also, as soon as you enter into the camp, you will find power armor on the left-hand side of the gate. Also, the building that we're looking for is this building right here. Now, it does have a terminal, and it's locked, and it'll need a password. But it does have a three-lock on the door and if your lock picking is high enough you can go ahead and pick the door and continue on from there but we're gonna go and look for the password just in case some of you don't have the lock picking skill to get the door also take a moment look around the compound there's a lot of useful information on the Brotherhood of Steel if you're interested in finding that also, in one of these lockers that has a zero lock picking skill, you will find a key to a storage container that's located on the other side of the compound. It doesn't go to the gate that is in the building when you first walk in. It's to an actual container. Also, as you can see, I'm finding bobbleheads and plans as I look around in here. The password for the computer terminal is located in a building outside of the compound. Once we get close to it, we can see that the quest marker is showing us it's in the basement or underground of this building. So we're going to make our way downstairs. Once into the basement, we'll find a door that's locked, but it has a zero lock picking skill. So anybody will be able to pick this lock. Once you go through the door, hang a left, there's another door and the computer terminal password will be located on this container. Also, take a look around. There was quite a few useful items in this area that you may be interested in. Alright, now that we've got the computer terminal password, we can head back and actually open the door via the computer. So let's take a look at that real quick. Now, my lock picking skill is at 3, so I've already picked the lock and opened the door. But once you enter the room, take a look around. There's a lot of very useful items inside of this building. Also, as you're looking around, you're going to find a lot of information about the Brotherhood of Steel. Some's on that computer, and there are a few hollow tapes laying around as well. Also, we will find a steamer trunk that has quite a few things in it that you might find useful. And we also find the Overseer's Cache in here as well. 
So don't forget to pick that up. I don't know how she got in here, but she did and left us a cache. Now we can go ahead and finish looting the room and find the letter that we're looking for. Once we read this letter, our quest line will update. Because of reading the letter, we've now discovered the location of Fort Defiance. So the quest will now say, get inside the Brotherhood's headquarters. So let's take a look at that on the map and find out where Fort Defiance is at. If we go directly south and a little bit to the west, we will see our quest marker. And it says, get inside the Brotherhood headquarters. So we're going to need to make our way down to Fort Defiance. As soon as you reach this location, the quest will update. And it will say, discover the Brotherhood's tale. So let's enter the building and see if we can't find out what happened to them. Once you're in, head to the left and you'll see a billboard with a note attached to it. Once you read the note, the quest will update once again and you will have completed Defiance Has Fallen. You will also start the next quest in the quest line called Recruitment Blues. And it says take the elevator to the top floor. But we can't. There's a laser barrier blocking the way of the elevator. So what we're going to need to do is actually find our way through this building to the top floor. If you try to access the elevator from the first floor, the quest will update once again. It'll now say register for elevator security. Now even though this building is pretty big, it's fairly easy to find your way around in here. Once you've gotten to the top floor, you will see the elevator covered by another laser grid. Also, there will be a terminal on the side of it that requires a one hacking skill. This terminal will open the door to the munitions room where you may want to resupply again before you continue. The computer that we're looking for is located on the opposite side of the hallway. Once you've activated the correct file, you will get a new prompt on your quest. Then it'll say, search for clues to bypass security. The area that we're looking for is inside of this room, and we're going to want to read this note on the shelf right here. Once you've read this note, the quest will update once again, and it'll say, Complete Basic Training. So our next destination is Camp McClintock. Now, if you've already been to Camp McClintock and completed basic training, you're still going to have to go back even at this point in the quest. This is another place that you could have started the Brotherhood of Steel quest line without going to Abby's Bunker. When you get here, take a few minutes and look around and see if there's any clipboards. Clipboards have springs in them. And because there's so many items in the game for repairing or crafting that require springs, You'll want to think of this as your spring farm. This is where we go constantly to farm for springs, if somebody else hasn't already beat you to them. Now, if you haven't completed basic training, once you speak to Master Sergeant Gutsy, you will have to complete that quest before you can continue on. But if you have completed it, all you need to do is just speak to him, and your quest will update, and it'll say, get a government-issued ID. So our next destination is the Charleston Capitol Building, which is located directly south of Camp McClintock. Now this part of the quest line is interesting, fun, and a real pain in the ass all at the same time. The first thing that we're going to need to do is access this computer. We need to get and fill out a government ID application. Now, keep this in mind, you're going to fill it out through this terminal, and it's going to ask you a lot of questions. There are a lot of choices that you can choose from, so have some fun with it. It doesn't matter what you choose in this terminal, you will still have to do all the same steps regardless. So, I'm going to go ahead and use Army Recruit, I'm going to go ahead and use the Vault as my address, and everything that may have happened to me as I started playing the game. Once again, have some fun. You can do a lot of different things here. It really doesn't matter. Once you've completed filling out your application, the quest will re-update one more time. 
it'll now say turn in ID application to department B. And this is where it kind of gets a little funny and a little annoying. Agents are required to take a number and wait for the automated number terminal to call their number before being serviced. Have a nice day. After speaking with the robot in Department B, the first thing that you're going to need to do is collect a ticket number, which is actually located in the scanner right beside the robot. And our ticket number is C42. Once we've got our ticket number, we're going to need to access this computer so that our number is registered into the system so that the robots will call it. And we'll just click on Department C because it is C42. Now, while we're waiting for the robot to call our number, keep in mind there is an overseer's cache here as well. And you will want to pick that up and listen to what the overseer has to say. Now we're just waiting for our ticket to be called. And there it is. Now we can speak to the robot once again. While doing this, every now and then you will get a pushy customer that's trying to cut in line ahead of you. So just ask them politely to go to the end of the line. Mail must have a valid U.S. Postal Service postmark. Have a nice day. Once the DMV bot has finished his blah 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 blah, you'll notice that your quest is updated again. It'll now say acquire a postmark letter in Charleston. Well this location is actually not too far away, but it is kind of hard to find. It'll be located in this mailbox laying on the ground. Also, you may have to take a moment and introduce yourself to the locals before you head back to the Charleston Capitol building. But once you get back into the building, you'll be able to go right back up to the bot and speak to him again. Greetings, C-42. Mail identified. Scanning. Scanning. 1203 Grape Street. Does not match address on DMV AT-21C. This is resident. Acquire DMV AT-21C dash B authorization from Charleston Courthouse. Have a nice day. Alright, now that the bot's finished with his gibberish, what it actually turns out to be is that the postmark letter that we just got does not match the address on our application. So, we're going to need to go find another form to fill out so we can correct that. Now, there's a couple of ways to get to this area. The quickest, fastest, and easiest way is to go out the front of the Charleston Capitol building, into that little cave, through the bus, and into this building. Once you get in here, you'll see this door that has a zero lock picking skill on it. Anybody can pick this door. Now we're going to look for the form that we need. But first, we're going to loot a couple of these typewriters because they got springs in them. And here in this box is the form that we need. Now this is what's kind of confusing about this building. Even though it looks like a separate building, it's not. It's still part of the Charleston Capitol building. And you can actually make your way back to the DMV bots in this building. Like I said a little earlier, the quickest and simplest way to do this is to go back out the door, through the bus, and back over to the entrance of the Charleston Capitol building. But as you can see here, as we're fast forwarding, we will get to where the DMV bots are at after we do a lot of looting, killing, and scrounging. Greetings, C-42. DMV AT-21C. Dash B. Recognized. Processing. Processing. All required paperwork for ID renewal is in order. Error. Department B is for renewals only. Department C is designated for new IDs. Have a nice day. And that is why this part of the quest line is annoying. After going through all of that bullshite, 
we discover that Department C is for renewals, and we have to go to Department B now. Now when we get over to Department B, we find out that we have to re-queue into the system again. And we need to get another new ticket number and register it into the computer. Now don't do what I just did and go to the computer first. Instead, get your ticket number first, then go to the computer and register it in so that your number will be called as quickly as possible. And just before we're ready to register on the computer, it looks like the guy that we asked to go to the back of the line has went and got a couple of friends, and they're trying to beat you up. So once again, politely ask them to go to the back of the line. And now we can talk to the bot. You've got to be kidding me, right? A coffee break? Yo, dude! I said to the back of the line. Oh, man, that guy's a persistent little bugger. But if he's been going through what we've been going through, I can fully understand why he wants to cut to the front of the line. And associated paperwork identified. A3. Scanning. Scanning. Error ID. 34B. Forward slash 1. Valid birth certificate. Consult the helpful error assistance entries on the application terminal. Talk about a huge waste of time. This part of the quest line literally has more hoops to jump through than a three ring circus. Now our updated quest says learn about code 34B forward slash 1. Once you've clicked on that part of the computer terminal, it will update again and it says stamp the document you have with the governor's seal. Now this part of the quest line can get confusing. The marker says to go out the door. But since we know that we can access any part of the Capitol building through the hole in the wall, we're going to go that way. And it's actually not too far away by doing that. Once you get into the governor's office, you can find a seal on this table behind his computer. Once you've clicked on it, the quest will re-update and it'll say turn the application into C1. So we're just going to head back real quick and do that. Please wait for your number to be called. Have a nice day. Greetings, A3. Paperwork identified. Scanning, scanning, everything is in order. Proceed to the photography station to receive your government ID card. Have a nice day. Once you've taken a picture for your military ID card, this part of the quest line is now complete. Thank God. Now, your quest will update and it'll say register for the Brotherhood of Steel. And we're going to need to go back to Fort Defiance to do that. When you get back, make your way up to the top floor once again and log on to the terminal that's at the end of the top floor. Choose register new personnel and then choose scan military ID card. Once you've done that, your quest will update again and it'll now say investigate the Brotherhood and the Scorched Beast. Because we have a military ID card, we're now having access through the laser grid and we can take the elevator further up into the top of Fort Defiance. Once you get to the top floor, your quest will show you to go to a computer terminal at the end of the hallway. Log on to it and read through all of the different files. After you've done that, cross the hallway into this room. On the table, you'll see a hollow tape that has a lot of cool information on it and this letter that's labeled Mission Orders. Once you've read it, make your way over to this terminal and log on. You'll want to choose Urgent Touchdown Recovery. By doing this, you will initiate the brand new quest from the Brotherhood of Steel called Belly of the Beast. 
After receiving Belly of the Beast, you'll also complete the main quest, Recruitment Blues. And now we can move on with the final part of the Brotherhood of Steel quest line. When you start the quest, Belly of the Beast, it will now say use the Brotherhood Emergency Transponders radios to find Taggarty. And it'll show you a yellow circle on the map where that transponder will be at somewhere in that circle. This is the first location for the first transponder. When you find it, press X to synchronize the transponder. You can also press A to listen to the last transmission. Now keep this in mind, ladies and gentlemen. There are four of these locations that you need to discover, and the fifth one will be the Glass Cavern. If you leave the server or quit the game at any time through this mission, you will have to start it over again from the very first location. Now this is the second location, and it's located deep inside of Watoga. So we're going to head over that way. Once we get into Watoga, we're going to find a downed vertebrate and our second transponder. Once again, press X to synchronize it, and you can press A if you choose to do so, so you can hear the last transmission. Now just a second ago we did see the location for the third transponder, but before we get out there there's something I'd like to show everyone just in case you don't know. If you look for the Super Duper Mart, which is not too far away from the downed vertebrate, you will find Vendorbot Phoenix. This vendor bot has been commissioned by the Brotherhood of Steel, and it's their only vendor in that faction. Also, Vendorbot Phoenix has a lot of plans and recipes that you can purchase, and quite a few of them are for building in the camp system. Now that we've reached our third area for the transponder, we're deep inside of enemy territory, and we're going to have plenty of Scorch to fight here, as well as possibly some bots and a Scorched Beast. Now, if you're on this quest line, there is a ground-to-air missile launcher, and you can repair it, and it will help you in defeating the Scorched Beast that may be flying around in this area. Now, sometimes I've been here and repaired that ground-to-air missile launcher, and it has not worked in fighting the Scorched Beast, but there has been a few times I've been here, and it did help and work. So, it just depends, I guess, I don't but when you repair it, it will help you take the enemies down in this location. And once you do that, you'll be able to go over and activate this next transponder and listen to the radio message that's played from it. Time Moreno to Defiance! Moreno to Defiance! The Scorch must have fried one of the transponders. At Alpha Zulu 13. End zone is a negative. This module of yours is a real treat, Grant. New chords at Echo Lab 7. Bravo's all over. We'll make it to the end. Alright, now this is the location for the fourth and final transponder that you'll need to activate before you go into the glass caverns. At this point of the quest, you're going to be extremely deep into enemy territory. It's highly likely that you're going to run into two or three Scorched Beasts and a shit pot full of Scorched. Now also in this area there are quite a few other different types of enemies as well. So I suggest that you come well prepared for this because you may be in for a huge fight as well as the fights in the Glass Cavern. Once you finally discovered the pit that is the entrance of the glassed caverns, you may find yourself over encumbered. 
because of the length of this particular quest line, you might have overindulged in picking up quite a bit of junk. So you might want to take this opportunity to make your way back to camp to drop off all the junk you've collected and refresh in your character. When you get back to the dungeon, it is quite lengthy and there's a lot of resources that you might be interested in collecting, Ultra Sight being one of them. Also keep this in mind, this part of the dungeon is bugged and quite often other scorch beasts that are outside make their way through the cavern walls or ceiling and you have to fight them before you get to the end. Now the boss at the end of the dungeon is a high-leveled scorched beast wearing a crown. She'll be pretty tough, but after what you've just gone through getting here, she shouldn't be much of a problem. Once you've taken her down, the transponder that you're looking for is in this pile of dead enemy bodies. It's a little bit hard to find, but with your quest marker, it should be easy to locate. Place the charges. It's now or never. The exit to leave the glass caverns is not too far away from where you killed the boss. But before you leave, look around. You'll find a Nola's backpack and a hollow tape. It does have more information on about what they were doing down here in these caverns, just in case you're interested. Now at this point in time, your quest should have updated, and it now says learn more about the Scorched at Taggarty's Quarters. Now there's two ways to leave. You can press that button and take the lift up to the surface, or you can go ahead and fast travel. But you won't be able to fast travel if you're over encumbered or enemies are nearby. So if there are enemies nearby, clear them out and then you'll be able to fast travel. Now if you take the elevator to the surface because you are over encumbered, you may have to fight a few more scorched as you're leaving the area. So fast traveling is better. Once you return back to Fort Defiance, you need to find Taggarty's quarters, or more to the point, the computer that's located in his quarters. When you get back to the top floor, you'll see the quest marker leading us into an area that we previously didn't have access to. Once you log on to Taggarty's computer, you need to click on Ultimate Solution, and that will complete Belly of the Beast. And now we're done with the Brotherhood of Steel quest line. As you're watching for the quest reward items to pop up, you won't see that you got the Ultrasight Power Armor. It's actually in your inventory right now. So we'll take a look at that here in just a second. Also, there is an Overseer's Cache located up here. So, don't forget to grab that as well, so you can continue on with that quest line. Now that we have the Ultrasight Power Armor, let's put it out and take a look at it. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen, our brand new shiny... Okay, I guess it's not brand new. It looks kind of damaged. Um, some of the pieces are not fully repaired, so it looks like all that Ultrasight that we collected while we were in the glassed caverns are going to be needed to repair this armor to its full potential. Let's jump in it, let's check it out, and see how it looks on us. Um, yeah, looks like our left arm is already in the red, so we're definitely going to have to repair this power armor. But it looks pretty sweet, and it will make a great addition to our power armor collection. I hope you're as happy with it as I am. Alright my Wasteland friends, I really hope that this video helps you out on how to get the Ultra Sight Power Armor from the Brotherhood of Steel. I thank you for stopping in, hanging out with me today, and I look forward to seeing you all on the next video and or stream. And just like always everyone, please, until next time, stay safe, and peace!